So this is the new generation 2 Ford Everest and like the new generation Ranger it has got what I think is a class leading and innovative trailer stability control system that I'm going to explain in this video. So this new feature is to do with trailer sway and trailer sway is the snaking you get when you're towing a large or heavy trailer at relatively high speeds and the trailer will start to snake and oscillate and unchecked those oscillations will just build up to the point where the whole thing might um, even crash and if you want to know more about that I've got a whole bunch of videos on what causes sway, how to mitigate it and even an interview with the survivors of people who had a a sway induced crash. So this is a real life example of a trailer sway crash. Take a look at the timer top right hand corner and see how very quickly it goes from control to no control. The cause here is speed and change of direction plus perhaps the trailer wasn't originally set up well to begin with and that's an important point. You must never just rely on electronic aids, set your trailer up correctly particularly with weight and drive it correctly and that for the systems won't need to kick in to save you. Now there's a lot you can do to mitigate the chances of trailer sway occurring and I've done some work on that but I'm not going to go over it again but in brief some of the important things are to make sure that you tow with a tow car which is heavier than the trailer, uh, centralise the weight distribution of the trailer around axles as best as you can and ensure tyre pressures are appropriate and generally means running a bit higher on the back of the tow car. Now one thing I will say is that there's this myth that if you tow you should have a 10% tow ball mass and that's just got no abs absolutely no basis in science or fact or research it's just a number which has appeared from somewhere and people hang on to it and personally I tow with around about six or seven percent and my trailer is nice and stable so merely getting a 10% tow ball mass is no guarantee of trailer stability. Even if you set your vehicle and trailer up perfectly you can still get sway and that's when it's a good idea to have some form of electronic safety aid. Now even an old Ranger like my PX here has something called TSC or trailer stability control and that is when the car's sensors, it's your sensor when the car moves like that and various others and wheel speed sensors are used to detect the onset of trailer sway. Then the car's electronics will individually break each each wheel as required to instantly bring that sway under control. That system is effective, it's been around for a long time and if you look in your owner's manual you'll probably find that any vehicle more than about or well, less than about 10 years old has it already. Now the other electronic way to mitigate sway is to actually act on the trailer. So we've got a trailer based stability control system and that works in a similar way to the car based system. When the trailer begins swaying there's sensors in the trailer which detect that sway movement and it will do one of two things. The more basic systems simply apply the trailer brakes on both wheel, on, on all wheels left and right side and that has the effect of slowing down the trailer and therefore stopping the sway. The newer systems, there's one, one from Bosch which has been remade with Alco etc and there's different brand names for it, that does the same thing but it breaks either the left or the right side of the trailer. Again the same sort of thing, it will just bring the trailer back into line and also slow it down and the Bosch system also has an ABS function as well. Now a question I've been asked many many times is if I've got a car based trailer stability control system should I buy or pay extra for the trailer based system and the answer to that is how much insurance do you want? When you're going to go into the outback do you take one spare tyre, two spare tyre, three spare tyres, do you take one sat phone plus a sat messenger plus a Starlink plus whatever else plus a, um, a personal locator beacon? It's just how much insurance um, do you want? So I can't really answer that, all I can do is give you the information so you can make your own decision. One thing I can say is that if you've got a car based system and a trailer based system they work complementary together so it's not a case of one will fight against the other. Um, the engineers have told me that and I, if there was any case of fighting each other I'm sure someone would have pointed it out to me by now. So that's the background 
to what's new and exciting about the latest Everest and Ranger. Now, the thing about those cars is they've got an ITBC, which is an integrated trailer brake controller. So you don't need to go to your local auto spark and get them to install a trailer brake controller it's already there built into the vehicle now what that means is that the ford engineers knew that the vehicle had a brake controller they knew which brake controller it was and how it worked and they could start to integrate that into the car's overall electronic stability systems and that's exactly what they did so the innovation they've come up with is we've got your standard car based system here but with the new Everest and Ranger, the system will also apply the trailer brakes and that works in conjunction with the car-based system. So, so, and that's really exciting to me. So you've actually got two forms of stability control, a car-based system and a trailer-based system just by buying the car. And that means that the Everest and the Ranger will be far more likely to be able to control sway because it's working on both trailer and car as opposed to just on the car. Now while trailer sway systems can definitely save your life at higher speeds, at slow speeds, rough terrain and off-roading, you don't want them engaging because they will just typically hinder process and that is why there is a disconnection switch for all systems that I've seen including one for the Everest. And all that does is deactivate the trailer braking stability part of the system. The TSC on the car would be deactivated generally in off-road modes and you'd still get trailer braking on the trailer, just not the automated um, stability control braking. So what does this mean for you as a buyer? Well, to my mind, it's actually a pretty big differentiator. If you're looking at a tow vehicle and considering an Everest against something else, then the fact that the Everest will actually control sway on the trailer as well as the car, to my mind, that, that's a big bonus. It also means you could save money. So for example, um, the cost of retrofitting or adding a trailer-based system to a, a trailer might be a few thousand dollars. Uh, there's much less need to do that if the Everest or the Ranger is going to be doing that um, job for you. Now I will say that with the Bosch system it does break individual left and, si left and right sides of the trailer and it does have ABS and whereas the Ford base system will only break both wheels on a trailer and it doesn't give ABS so it's not as good as the, as the Bosch system but um, to my mind it's still you know 80-90% percent of the way there. So whilst we're on the subject of towing, let's talk about the tow haul mode, which, as the name suggests, is specifically for towing. So that does a number of things. It changes the transmission shift points, so it will hold gears going around a corner. It will more likely to do engine braking coming down a hill and generally use the gears to try and control the trailer a bit. Obviously, when you're coming down a hill, you really want to use engine braking, select lower gears, otherwise you're likely to overheat the uh, brakes, possibly on the tow car, um, if not the trailer. The other thing it does is if the vehicle is in two-wheel drive it will put the vehicle into all-wheel drive which is obviously better for traction but it's also better for engine braking as well because you don't want a compression lock or overstress the rear axle and when you are accelerating in all-wheel drive mode you get better traction and there's less stress on the rear axle and Ford have also improved the blind spot information system the bliss and that's now got a trailer mode so that would be inactivated as well and there's a few other things that are pretty cool around towing. Now aside from the tow haul mode, there's a bunch of other things which I'm not going to go into in too much detail here, but the camera you can um, zoom in and to see exactly where the tow ball is. There's a connection checklist so you can go through and make sure that you've got your electrics connected, your jockey wheel up, etc. So that's pretty handy. You can check the trailer lights with an app and there's quite a few other cool things to do with the new Everest towing mode. Now I've done a lot of videos concerning trailer sway, I'm not going to repeat all of that here but I am going to take the opportunity to reiterate a really important safety point and that is how to 
eliminate or reduce trailer sway in the event that it happens. Now, if you've got a big heavy trailer, you're gonna have an independent brake controller, probably something like this Red Arc Tow Pro Elite, which I've got fitted in my car. When trailer sway starts, you've probably got about two or three seconds before it starts to get to the point where it's uncontrollable and unrecoverable. But in that time, you can take corrective action. And the very best corrective action you can take is to independently apply the trailer brakes without braking the tow car. And what that does is slow the trailer down to the speed of the tow car and therefore, it reduce or eliminate the sway. Now, how do you do that? It's really simple. You just press the button like that down and you see it changes from green to red and that's it and you do that without trying to accelerate out without trying to brake the tow car just press this button applies the brakes on the on the trailer sway gone that's the way to do it now there's one rider to that this um, brake controller like most of them has a variable braking resistance so you can go all the way to the left all the way to the right normally you'd leave it on about um, five or thereabouts and if you have it all the way to the left in a certain mode then as you press it you're not going to apply much braking force whereas all the way to the right in this case you press it you apply a lot more braking force so you need to experiment and find out what the correct braking force is for your trailer at any given speed and the way you do that is simple experimentation start off at um, 10 k's an hour and slowly build up and figure out what sort of braking force you're looking for and you should get to the point where when you're maybe 80, 100 k's an hour, you can press this and you'll feel that the trailer brakes will be applied, but the brakes aren't going to lock up and screech or something like that. But on the other hand, it's not so little that you press it and you feel absolutely nothing. That's how you know that you've got enough trailer brake uh, um, applied when you're going to be pressing the manual override button here. Now one other point, this brake controller is mounted centrally and that means the passenger can get to it as opposed to over here on the dash running, the driver can get to it. So what's the point of that? Well, in the event of trailer sway, there's no reason why the passenger couldn't simply operate the brake controller if they know what they're doing or if the driver is panicking. Now, I'm not suggesting that's ideal, the driver should know what to do and how to recover trailer sway, etc. But if they don't or they're panicking, then having it here means the passenger can get to it um, if they need to. Now this brake controller has two modes, proportional and user control. Proportional is when the amount of braking force the trailer gets is proportional to how hard the car decelerates. So the, basically the harder you brake, the more braking force goes to the trailer. That makes sense and that's what you use for mostly on-road driving. User control, you use that controller to go from 0 to 10 and however hard you brake the car or how softly you brake it, that amount of braking force, the same as always transmitted to the trailer and that's typically what you'd use in situations like off-road. In both cases the manual override system works. So are other manufacturers likely to follow Ford's lead and integrate a trailer stability control system which acts on the trailer as opposed to just on the tow car? And I think the answer to that is yes, but they're going to need to integrate a brake controller to do it. And most full, um, tow cars, four-wheel drives, do not come with an integrated brake controller in Australia. It's much more common in, in the US. And they're going to need to do that first and then they can do the integration. So I think Ford's got a bit of a head start on the market here. So I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments and thank you for watching.